Hello, everybody. So let me quickly summarize our results. Our first result is in the setting of um, elliptic curve groups. So here we uh, prove that if you assume that the Diffie-Hellman problem is hard, then each and every bit of the secret Diffie-Hellman group element is hard to compute. Uh, then we extend our uh, first result to the setting of finite fields of the form Fp squared. And uh, here, due to technical difficulties, we cannot prove anything about the regular Diffie-Hellman problem. So we define a new uh, problem, which we call the partial Diffie-Hellman. And then um, we show that if you assume this new problem is hard, then each and every bit of the degree one coefficient of uh, the secret Diffie-Hellman group element is hard to compute. So I will explain what the, uh, the partial Diffie-Hellman problem is, and I will also explain what the degree one coefficient is. Um, here, it should be noted that this is all we can say about finite field, uh, like the Diffie-Hellman problem in finite fields. Um, so, and then uh, we um, extend our second result to a large class of functions, which we call uh, finite field-based partial one-way functions. So here again, if we, uh, we, we show that if you assume these uh, functions are one way, then uh, each and every bit of the degree one coefficient of the input to these functions is uh, unpredictable. So before I continue, let me quickly summarize some of the related terms. Um, a function is called one way if it is easy to compute, but hard to in invert. And uh, we call a predicate for a one way function a hardcore predicate if it is hard to predict the value of the predicate uh, given the image of an element, better than tossing a random coin. A related problem is the Diffie-Hellman problem. So here we say the Diffie-Hellman problem is hard in a group. Uh, if it is hard to compute the secret group element g to the power ab, uh, given the two group elements g to the power a, g to the power b, and the group information. Um, and then we say a predicate is hardcore for the Diffie-Hellman problem if it is hard to predict the value of the predicate on the secret Diffie-Hellman group element, better than tossing a random coin, given, same, given the same information as before. So why do we need hardcore predicates? So as we know, f of x, or the group elements g to the power a, g to the power b, could reveal a lot of information about the secret. But we have the guarantee that the hardcore predicates on these secrets are preserved. So we can use uh, hardcore predicates whenever we need uh, pseudo-randomness, for example, key exchange protocols, uh, encryption, and pseudo-random number generators. So, um, so if you look at the literature, you see several uh, specific hardcore uh, predicates, uh, for example, to problems such as discrete log or RSA. But if you look at the Diffie-Hellman problem, the only known result comes from Borny and Spalinski from 2001. So here they prove that if you assume the Diffie-Hellman problem over uh, elliptic curves is hard, then uh, the least significant bit of the secret Diffie-Hellman group element is uh, unpredictable. So this is in a modified model. I will explain later. But this is the only result we have regarding uh, the Diffie-Hellman problem over elliptic curves. In terms of general hardcore predicates, we have the result from Goldreich and Levin. So here they show how to convert any one-way function to another one-way function, having a particular uh, hardcore predicate, a randomized hardcore predicate. So uh, let me quickly summarize some of the related work to our contribution. The first one comes from Bonnie and Spalinski, 2001. So here they show that if you assume the elliptic curve-based Diffie-Hellman problem is hard, then the least significant bit of the Diffie-Hellman secret group element is hardcore. So what they do is they take the in, in the proof, what they do is they take the instance of the problem, and then they access this oracle over a random representation of the curve. This is really important part of their result. And then the oracle gives the least significant bit on that representation, and then they can query the oracle a whole number, number of times. And then they, they aggregate the results and get the entire Diffie-Hellman secret group element. The second re result comes from Akavia, Goldwasser, and uh, Safra. So, here they provide a framework to prove that a particular predicate is hardcore for a one-way function. So their approach can be summarized in three steps. The first step is to define a multiplication code of this form, where the code words are functions. So the functions are defined as the output of the predicate, which is the output of the oracle. Uh, and then use the oracle. The second step is to use the oracle to compute a noisy version of these code words. 
And then finally, use list decoding techniques to find a small set of candidates for X. A bit more details on this framework. So we have this um, multiplication code, and then the oracle predicting correctly most of the time um, the, this predicate given the image of an element. Now, for the framework to work, we have to make sure the, the, this code meets the following properties. The first property is the accessibility. That is given the value of f of x. It should be possible to get a noisy version of the code word. So for this n, they assume the function f has some homomorphic properties. That is given lambda and f of x. It should be possible to compute lam, uh, f of lambda x. And then uh, they get the noisy access to this code word through the oracle by querying on this value, which is computed through the homomorphism. Now, two things should be noted here. The, the first thing is uh, the Diffie-Hellman problem, as we know, doesn't have any usable uh, homomorphic properties that we can use. So the direct application of uh, this framework wouldn't work. The second thing you should notice is these code words are exponentially large because Zn is exponentially large. But we don't have a problem with that because we are not going to store the entire code word in memory. We are going to access the bits as we need through the Oracle. The second thing we should uh, make sure that uh, is that the code words are Fourier concentrated. So that means every code word is a Fourier concentrated function. And then third, um, you have to make sure that the codes are recoverable. That means given a frequency or a character chi, there should be a polynomial time algorithm that finds all the values, all the x's, such that chi is heavy Fourier, heavy Fourier coefficient for the code word CX. Now, these two properties can be shown when the predicate is any individual bit and the code is a multiplication code. This is a result due to uh, Morillo and uh, uh, Raffles. Um, so, Third thing, uh, sorry, the fourth thing we should make sure is that the code is Fourier learnable. So that means th there should be an algorithm that efficiently finds all the heavy Fourier coefficients given noisy access to the code word. So once you make sure all these four properties are satisfied, the framework goes as follows. The first thing you do is uh, find all the heavy Fourier coefficients and from the concentrated property, we know that it's a small set, a problem number of uh, elements in there. And then for each and every uh, heavy Fourier coefficient, we run the recovery algorithm to get a polynomial number of uh, candidates. Once you have the set of candidates, which is a polynomial number of elements, you can try each and every one of them, apply the one-way function, and check whether you get the same output. Or you can just pick one at random, because it's a polynomial number, number of elements. You know the element is there. You get a non-negligible advantage. OK, so before I present our result, let me quickly uh, summarize some of the related terms to elliptic curves. So an elliptic curve can be represented by a short Weierstrass equation of this form for non-zero discriminant. Now, uh, two elliptic curves are isomorphic to each other. If the coefficients of their short Weierstrass equations are related by a lambda in the multiplicative group of the finite field. So from this, we can see that the, isomorphism, uh, the isomorphisms are in one-to-one -one correspondence with these elements. So the isomorphism class on elliptic curve can be written as shown here. Um, and we can also compute this isomorphism very easily by uh, this formula. Basically, you multiply the x coordinate by lambda squared and y coordinate by lambda cubed. Now, our first result um, shows that if you assume that Diffie-Hellman problem or elliptic curve is hard, then each and every bit of the secret Diffie-Hellman group element is hard to compute. Now, the way we show that is by um, showing an algorithm to use any uh, oracle predicting any of the bits of the secret Diffie-Hellman group element better than its bias over a random representation of the curve to recover the entire Diffie-Hellman group element. This uh, notion of randomizing the representation comes from Bonnie and Spalinski. Now, um, as you will see, we use this uh, way of accessing the oracle to replace the isomorphism required by the framework of Akavia et, et al. OK, so let me quickly uh, outline the, the proof. So basically, we are given this um, problem instance and an oracle predicting the kth bit. From the isomorphism, this translates to this value here. Um, 
So how we do it is as follows. We first we define the multiplication code where the code words are functions and the output of the functions are defined as shown here. Now um, we have a problem because this is lambda, this is lambda squared. So when you have lambda squared, we have some problem with the framework. So what we can do is following Bonnie and Spalinski, define a new oracle that accesses the old oracle on the square of lambda if lambda is a square. Otherwise, picks a biased coin with the correct bias. Now here we, we lose the advantage by half, but still it's not negligible, so that's, there's no problem there. And then we can show that the properties are properties for the required for the Akavia framework are also satisfied. Specifically, you should note here that our codes are accessible even if the Diffie-Hellman problem doesn't have the homomorphic properties. Because we are, we are randomizing the representation of the curve. So basically, we replace the uh, homomorphism with the randomizing uh, of the representation. And uh, finally, at the end of the framework, we get a polynomial uh, size list of candidates. Now, since it's the Diffie-Hellman problem, we cannot do anything to like, find which one is the correct one with uh, very high, like the constant probability one. Um, so what we can do is either output one at random or we can use Victor Schub's self-corrector which finds the correct one with very high probability. And next thing we tried to do was uh, find another setting where we can apply this framework or this approach. So if you look at the finite fields of the form fp squared, we know for a given prime p there are many fields of this form, but they're all isomorphic to each other. So each of these fields can be represented by a monic irreducible polynomial of this form so that the field is isomorphic to uh, the polynomials of fp modulo h, where h is this uh, uh, polynomial. Now, the elements in fp squared becomes linear polynomials of this form. I denote for simplicity by this notation the degree i uh, coefficient. Now, for given two monic irreducible polynomials, there exists an easily computable isomorphism, which is computed by right multiplication of the coefficients by a matrix of this form. Um, for example, if I apply this isomorphism to this uh, element, which is a linear polynomial with these two um, coefficients, I, I multiply by this matrix, and then I get these uh, two coefficients of the target element. Now, there are two things to note here. There's an al algorithm. The first thing is there's an algorithm that, given this matrix, finds the Monic irreducible polynomial. Um, and then the second thing, which is important to note here, is that this uh, degree one coefficient stays uh, multiplicative with respect to lambda, but degree zero coefficient doesn't have the multiplicative properties. Now, let's look at the Diffie-Hellman problem over finite fields of the form fp squared. Now, as I showed, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the elements are linear polynomials. Now, for the framework of Akavia at all to work, uh, we have to create a multiplication code. Now, according to the isomorphism I showed earlier, we only get the multiplicative code on the degree one coefficient. So that's the technical difficulty I mentioned earlier. So to overcome this difficulty, we have defined a new problem called the partial Diffie-Hellman problem. So here, the adversary only has to compute the degree one coefficient of the secret Diffie-Hellman group element instead of the entire uh, group element. So now, assuming this problem is hard, we can show that uh, each and every bit of the degree one coefficient is uh, hard to compute. Uh, basically, what we do is, given an adversary predicting any of the bits of the degree one coefficient, we show how to use that adversary to uh, invert the Diffie-Hellman problem and get the degree one coefficient. So the idea is to apply the framework of uh, Akavia at all. So the sketch of the proof goes as follows. So we are given an instance of this uh, problem in the finite field of the form fp squared. And then we also have an oracle predicting the kth bit of the degree one coefficient, which translates to this uh, value here by the isomorphism. Uh, and the oracle predicts the correct value most of the time. Uh, that's how it is. Um, so how we do it is as follows. First, we define the multiplication code. Um, where the code words are functions and the value of these functions is defined as here. We don't have that problem of squared lambda because the isomorphism works nicely in this case. Um, 
and then we can show the code meets the following properties uh, required for the Acavia at all framework. Uh, and then at the end, we get a polynomial uh, size list of degree one coordinates, degree one uh, coefficients. Uh, now with that, we, don't, we cannot apply the, well, first of all, we cannot uh, find it because it's a Diffie-Hellman problem. Second, we cannot find uh, the right one using the Victor Schub's um, result because you only have the degree one coefficients. But we can still pick one of them at random, and we have the assurance that the correct value is there, and we pick one at random, we get a non-negligible advantage. Okay, finally, we extend our second result to a large class of functions, which we call the finite field-based partial one-way functions. Uh, a function is called finite field-based partial one-way if it is easy to compute given the input alpha, but it's hard to invert and obtain the degree one coefficient of alpha, which is a linear polynomial. Uh, finally, I, this is very important, the function should not depend on a particular isomorphism class of FP square, because we have to chain the isomorphism uh, when we use the proof. Okay, the, uh, in crypto 2012, Duke and Jetshev proved a similar results for elliptic curve-based one-way functions. So in, in that case, they don't have this partial uh, one-way function problem because they can compute the entire uh, input. So in summary, we first uh, showed that the, each and every bit of the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, uh, the secret value of the elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman problem is hard, um, uh, hard to compute bits. And second, uh, we applied the framework to the setting of um, finite fields of the form FP squared and showed that uh, if you assume the partial Diffie-Hellman problem is hard in this setting, each and every bit of the degree one coefficient of the um, Diffie-Hellman group element is hard and then uh, we extend our second result to the uh, large class of functions called finite field-based partial one-way functions. And then we prove that um, if you assume these functions are one-way, then each and every bit of the degree one coefficient of the input to these functions is uh, hard to compute. You can think of this approach as augmenting the input to a computationally hard problem with a random description of the underlying uh, group. So our work leaves several open problems. The first open problem is how to extend our result to the finite fields of the form Fp t for t greater than two. The second open problem would be uh, to show that um, the Diffie-Hellman problem of Fp squared implies the partial Diffie-Hellman problem of Fp squared. And another open problem would be show that uh, Diffie-Hellman problem of Fp implies the partial Diffie-Hellman problem of Fp squared. And finally, the biggest open problem we have in this setting is to find a hardcore predicate for regular Diffie-Hellman over FP. Now, in that setting, we have a big problem because we have only one representation. We cannot change the representation. Uh, but we hope our techniques will be useful when showing uh, some similar result in this um, last problem. So that's the end of my talk. Thank you very much for listening.